government pressure for fuel-efficient cars has charged up a new interest in electricity lately, and JMJ Electronics of Oklahoma City says they've come up with a winner, a battery-powered system that can be installed in ready-made subcompacts. Most people aren't interested in the long range. They want a limited commuter vehicle to go to school in, go to work in, uh, take the kids to Little League ball, whatever. If you had a, a Rabbit or an Omni or a Horizon, if you had your own car right now, whether it be new or used, the suggested retail price is $3,900 to convert your car. And of course, you'd still have your engine. We could either sell it for you or you could keep it if you ever wanted it or whatever you might want to do with it. It's not a car that you go from here to uh, Kansas City in or somewhere like that. Okay, what about maintenance and upkeep? How do you keep the batteries charged and, and running more? You just drive it in your garage or wherever the nearest plug-in is and, and uh, let it charge. It takes about four or five hours on 220 and about eight hours on 110. The price tag on this car is about $9,000. The electricity cost is calculated at about a penny a mile. But for the time being, the electric car is still a car of the future. Only 50 will be put out this year, and all those have been spoken for. Miriam Hernandez, Channel 5 News. Even in this car, everything sitting in this car is antiquated now. It's about a uh, 12 or 15 horsepower. As a matter of fact, the new models that we're fixing up at 10 horsepower, uh, electric motors compared to what it would take. Uh, it's about a penny a mile. But of course, one thing that uh, we run across an awful lot of women. Go ahead. Uh, of, of each okay. part and all. Part of it. As you know, there are literally dozens of country at the present time. How is this one different from all of those? Well, this is actually a passenger car that's feasible to drive on the road today. It's not just a prototype anymore. And also, we have the solar recharging cells, which you can see on the top for accessories, etc. And also, with our unit, we have what's called an onboard charging system that will actually mount in the vehicle, be a permanent part of the vehicle, that you can start up that if you need to run the vehicle for an extended period of time, say if you want to drive it from here to Dallas or something like that. This onboard charger is a rather unwieldy-looking device. How, how is it going to fit into the overall design of the car? Well, if you look at the charger now, of course, it's very large, and whenever we actually use it and run it in the car, we have to pull the back seat out. But when it's finally engineered into the car, of course, the batteries will be placed in a different position, giving us more room in the back, and also the overall size of the unit will be brought down to approximately half of what it is now. May I take it for a drive? Certainly. This is my first experience with an electric-powered vehicle. And so far, at least, I must say, it uh, operates rather smoothly. I'm told to ship this just as you would an ordinary gasoline-powered vehicle, and uh, we'll try it. There we go. Matter of fact, it feels very much like a gasoline-powered car. JMJ Electronics has 12 confirmed orders for vehicles such as this one. They are to be delivered by September 1st at a cost of about $8,000 each. For Newsroom 9, I'm Dean Swanson, cruising along in southwest Oklahoma City. J&J Electronics has already converted a Volkswagen Rabbit. Now they'll begin their work with the larger Dodge Omni. Right now, with the, as, of course, as you know, the fossil fuel reserve that we have is running lower. The electric car, we found that uh, can be now, after, after years of research, we have come up with what we think is the, the adequate electric car that will give enough power and speed to get the people on the expressways to move them across country, uh, saving our fuel reserve as much as we can. The Omni here, graciously given to us by the Chrysler Corporation, is mainly for research and development and testing. What we'll do is immediately uh, start to work in removing the engine and uh, changing it to an electric car. Uh, after the conversion is made, I'm sure that uh, the Chrysler Corporation is going to be watching very closely. JMJ is currently constructing an assembly plant, which will begin converting cars to electric motors by late October. The firm plans the conversion of approximately 10 different standard gasoline models to electric by kits made to specifications for those models. 
Jacob says a patented generating system in the cars will allow virtually unlimited travel without stopping to recharge the car's power cells. And Jacob's added that the process of completely recharging the batteries overnight will take only about 36 cents worth of electricity. This is Mike Ernett, Newsroom 9, Oklahoma City. It was open house at the JMJ Electronics Corporation where the public got a chance to look at the new electric engine it had installed in a Dodge Omni. JMJ President Pat Jacobs says they hope to open a plant within the next few months so they can convert engines on a larger scale. We'll remove the power plants on existing cars, the engine and the gasoline tank, which you no longer need, the radiator, which you no longer need, and replace it with our electronics equipment. And with, uh, by doing that, then we can convert any number of cars and ship them anywhere in the United States. Jacob says an option on the line of cars is the new JMJ range extender, which will allow the driver to recharge the car while it is in motion, instead of having to stop and plug it into a socket. Ramona Russ, Five Alive News. ...out of the American way of life. But necessity is the mother of invention, so another kind of car may be on its way. Here's Joan Lowenstein. It looks like a normal Dodge Omni, but it's really an electric car. Oklahoma City-based JMJ Electronics is putting electric motors in Omnis, Rabbits, and other small cars. Similar vehicles have been around for a long time, but the Federal Department of Energy rates this as one of the best. It takes three to four thousand dollars to make a regular car an electric car, and it's not for high speed or long distance travel. The electric car now is practical immediately, but it's practical in that it's, uh, it's a good second car, it's a good car for the family to uh, drive around without having to wait for that gasoline line to get down or the odd even numbers. Uh, I think you're going to see a car of the future coming very shortly within the next three to six months that will give you possibly the range you need, but right now it's practical for in-town driving. It'll save you that gasoline. This car has a conventional electric motor with nine big batteries that have to be charged. But the electric motor of the future is now on JMJ's drawing board. Scientists said it couldn't be done, but this motor can recharge itself and make now an electric car with a range of 300 miles. Joan Lowenstein, New Center 4. I know somebody also said it couldn't be done. I wonder if you can charge that if you buy it. The electric car clean, quiet, and as petroleum becomes scarcer and more expensive, the car of the future. But electric cars are limited, their batteries needing frequent and time-consuming recharging. If a way could be found to make electric motors more efficient so they would use less battery power per mile, batteries wouldn't have to be recharged so often. An electric car manufacturer in Oklahoma City, JMJ Electronics, has come up with that more efficient motor. The excess wasted energy is used to provide additional power, power that would normally be lost as heat. But the new motor's uses go much further than just electric cars. If you were able to take advantage of the losses as we uh, now consider them in electric machines and uh, utilize these losses to, for a shaft output to drive loads, then of course this would make the uh, application of many motors that are now somewhat uh, less efficient and not equipped for the job uh, be a consideration that the industry might like to take. JMJ says its new motor can provide enough extra power to run air conditioners, power steering, all the luxury options that have been up until now the domain of conventional automobiles. In addition, it can extend the car's range from 60 to more than 300 miles. In short, JMJ's electric car will do everything its internal combustion cousins will do without burning up our dwindling petroleum resources. When the electric car goes into mass production within the year, JMJ Electronics will put practical electric transportation within everybody's The electric car is no longer a thing of the future, and they're here in Oklahoma City. Pat, how long have you been working with the electric car? Uh, JMJ Electronics has been working with it for probably the past uh, three years. JMJ Electronics is, was not really, uh, was not in the beginning in the auto industry. They were mainly uh, DC power generators for the overseas market. Uh, they have uh, engine analyzers and testing equipment. You're already selling some of these, Yes, right? we are. Uh, what's the price for an electric car? Well, there's two, there's two different cars. There's a 72-volt car and there's a 96-volt car. The 72-volt car sells for uh, $9,950.
whereas the 96-volt uh, system is 11,450. You say the difference between the two is like a six-cylinder and an eight-cylinder? Well, yes, it's, you have more power in your 96-volt in your system. It's giving you a little more power, a little more pickup, a little more speed. How much would it cost if I wanted to have a, uh, a relatively new car converted to... Uh, to electric? Yes. It would be uh, right now $3,900, and uh, that's when we pull the engine, and we'll give you the engine back, and we'll give your radiator back, we'll give your gasoline tank back. There's a lot of people that will buy that right away unless it's not good. And, uh, but we install it and make it completely ready for you. Do you have any kind of guarantee on this? You bet. If it's our car, you have the new car guarantee, like from uh, Chrysler Corporation, if it's a Dodge Omni, or if it's a Plymouth Horizon, or if it's a Volkswagen Rabbit. But uh, on the other hand, the guarantee that uh, we put on would be on our controller and the batteries and the motor. Okay. What about um, in terms of money? How much does it cost to operate an electric car? Well, I had read it was something like 48 cents a day. That's right. That's Consider hard to believe. That. Well, we've run many checks on it, and uh, when you take the batteries down to where you only have 10% charge left, in other words, you've used 90% charge, then you have 10% left in the car, you can charge the batteries for 48 cents. Now, on that charge, you can go probably on how you drive a car around 60 to 65 miles range who have been some of your customers so far well number one you're holding <coughs> a picture here of the uh, united states postal department has bought one of the cars and put it on their test track in bethesda maryland what we're hoping for is when they get through driving the car and testing it uh, we feel like it'll exceed anything they've seen so far and they feel this way we hope uh, then we'll have orders from the government uh, from the post office in the future what about the average John Blow? <laughs> you walking down the street and, and sure. buying a car. Sure. Are you already getting yeah. a lot of inquiries oh, about you bet. it? We sold probably, if we could produce the cars, uh, earlier today we had a call from uh, California. Could they get 100 vehicles? ...of Oklahoma City. Well, the firm is now in full production, converting 100 cars a month to electric. In about four weeks, the company will begin converting GM Citation. The cars are changed over by taking out the engines and radiators and installing batteries under the hood and in the trunk. The president of JMJ says the Postal Service is testing the Omni and will probably purchase several hundred of the electric car vehicles. The price tag on the conversion process... Uh, and they say the demand is now growing. Arlene Teff reports. When these men finish working on this car, it will get no miles a gallon. But in this case, that's desirable. They're installing batteries to make a JMJ electric car. The Oklahoma City-based firm converts the cars so they use no gasoline and can be charged by plugging into a common household outlet. It will then travel 50 to 80 miles without recharging. Demand seems to be growing for the electric car, but so far the large automobile companies haven't jumped into mass production. And they have commitments on sales and production lines. For them to get into a brand new field, an electric car field, they have to know that there can uh, be at least the sales of a quarter of a million. To start a brand new line, that means they'll have to open up a brand new line within their plant. You're talking about probably several million or even a billion dollars. So before they're going to commit to it, they're going to watch other people. Here we can do like 20 a week or uh, 50 to 100 a month or something like this. That's not, uh, for them to do that, it would cost them too much. For us to do it, it's fantastic. A ride in the converted car doesn't feel much different than in a gas-powered automobile. It cruises at 55 miles an hour and can accelerate from standstill to 30 miles an hour in 10 seconds. Its top speed is only 65, so a driver wouldn't win many speed races, but at a cost of one cent a mile, the selective may choose electric. Arlene Teft, News Center 4. I'm here who's going to talk about electric cars. Yes, and we have Representative Jim Townsend who's going to talk about a new proposal for funding education. Oh, I certainly need think we need to have more fun in education, for sure. Oh, no. We, what? Funding. Funding. Well, we could have more fun. Is sure, that what you right. said? Oh. Transportation. We're supposed to be running out of energy, and uh, transportation is a problem. We have a company here in Oklahoma City called JMJ J &M -J Electronics Corporation, and they were on our show a couple of years ago uh, talking about the electric car they are developing. Well, we're going to get a further and later report, so would you welcome the president of the JMJ Electronics Company, Mr. Pat Jacobs. Mr. Jacobs, welcome to Danny's Day. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. I was not aware that there were actually electric cars on the market. 
there's several electric cars on the market, but really, actually, the largest plant producing electric cars in the United States today is JMJ, right here in Oklahoma City. We're very proud of it. We're very excited about it. We have a new plant. We do seven at a time now. We worked out uh, contracts with Chrysler Corporation to ship cars direct to us without motors, uh, without gas tanks and radiators, the things that we don't need on the car. Are they going to give you a 30-day money-back guarantee on the car? Oh, you bet. Christ you bet. <laughs> I saw that yesterday. You're, how often do you turn out seven cars? Seven cars a day? Seven oh, cars no, a week? Seven? Not now. It's, it, we'll maybe get to that later on, Danny. Right now, it's turning out about seven to ten cars a month. Uh, have you been selling any of these cars? Oh, you bet. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the first real big sale was with the Chrysler Corporation uh, providing us with an Omni. Uh, we took the Omni, converted several others, and the United States Post Office bought one to test, run test on in uh, Bethesda, Maryland, Rockville, up at uh, Maradcom. And they just completed their test last week, and they say by far it exceeds any electric car they've had on their track. So we're very excited about it. How far, when the last time I talked to uh, Mr. Shannon of your company, your electric car would probably go from here to Amarillo, I believe, without stopping. Is that right? Or it's uh, recharging. It can go probably, depending on how fast you drive it, Danny, about 70 miles on a charge, uh, which uh, the Oklahoma Gas and Electric ran a test on it. It's about 35 cents to charge it to go 70 miles. So you're talking about a half cent a mile. Where do they have it charged? Do you have your own charger? Mm, you have your own charger, but you charge it in your garage or in your carport or any way around your house. It just plugs into the regular outlet in your house. How fast do these cars go? Are they just like any other car? Oh, well, not quite as fast. They'll go, the ones that we have will go 70 miles an hour. Uh, we try to show a picture of your car, by the way, so everybody can see it. Uh, this, is this, I believe this is it, right? That's it. Is that the electric car? That's now, it. the last time we talked to you about this car, you had a gasoline charger that went with this, though. Did you not? See? Well, you could use gasoline to charge it. What could you charge it for if you used gasoline? You well, used a little gas charger. What this did, that charger was what we call the range extender. Uh -huh. uh, it's a 10-horse Briggs & Stratton gasoline engine that powered a generator to take your car past the state of charge that you have in your batteries. In other words, if you reach the end of the 70 miles, you can turn your range extender on and go on past that as long as you have gasoline in your, in your engine. Well, what can you charge it for? What kind of cost are you talking about charging if you have to charge it with an extender? Oh, very little. It's just the price of your gasoline and estimate that you can get 100 miles to a gallon of gas using a 10-horse engine. So uh, well, 100 miles, you can, that's right. you can charge it for go 70. Yeah? That's right. Son of a gun. And how fast did you say it would go? About 70 miles an hour. <laughs> that's pretty quick. Very quick. You get arrested at that point. <laughs> you don't, you don't do that. No, stay at 55. Uh -huh. uh, have you sold any of these to private individuals oh, yes. yet? Several. I think we've got, so far, we've sold around 32 vehicles. Uh, these are throughout the United States. We have some in uh, the state of Washington, California. Uh, by the way, we took one of the cars to Washington, D.C. We took 28 United States senators and 24 House members riding on one charge. Uh, then we ended up going over to the Department of Energy and giving them a ride. So we're saying we have the vehicle. Uh, you know, that, that's rather unusual because Congress has been giving us a ride for quite a while. <laughs> yes, they have. They're still giving us a ride, yes. Right. <laughs> you bet. We've had, uh, we're supposed to be having federal funding available in Washington for electric vehicles and alternate sources of energy. And we've had applications in for years along uh, other people, other manufacturers have. Very little is coming out of Washington. What we're doing, we're doing on our own with private capital. Are they expensive? That's what I wanted to know. Carrie, they're, they're running right now around twelve or $13,000 per vehicle. But when we start getting the contracts in or the cars in from Chrysler without the, uh, the engine, you take the cost of the engine and the gas tank and the radiator. Then you take their cost to put it in, our cost to take it out. So you can see that's raising two or $3,000 just for the price of the vehicle. Now that we have a contract, you'll see that price coming down. All right, Pat, we want to thank you very, very much. My for pleasure. Me. If somebody wants to come see you, you're still located, I think, out by... You're in the... We're in the Charlie Montgomery's building. I well, that's, that's our marketing, and we have a brand new plant, Danny, that okay. we want you out to look at right, because yeah. you were out there before. Now we're doing, uh, you can come in and watch the seven cars being uh, uh, worked on at one time, see how we do it. We enjoy, we have people out continually in tours every day. Good. And where is this located? 4415 Highline Boulevard is our marketing. Come there, we'll drive you over in an electric car and take you through the plant. <laughs> Thank you. Thank very you, much Danny. For that. Nice Thank you, Kerry. Say hi to John Shannon for us, would you? We'll do it. Good deal. And uh, by the way, uh, are the extension cords for these? I knew, <laughs> I knew that was coming. It usually does. <laughs> well, I thought we'd put it at the end. Oh, good, the good, good. Stick around. Just a moment. We have a representative uh, with us, and he's going to talk about uh, funding for education. education.